Hey guys, I'm back with another book apart from Rourke, Diaries, Popstar, and we are on, we are on, Saturday, November 30th. When I finally woke up, it was almost noon. Knowing that I was going to have to face my parents made me feel a little nauseated. On top of that, the sun was shining in my eyes and I had a splitting headache. I was surprised to see that I still had on my clothes from last night. I grabbed my pillow, groaned, and buried my head under it. Suddenly, there was a knock on my door, but I ignored it. Most Saturday mornings, Brianna and Miss Peniel wake me up, but today was my lucky day. Before I could yell, go away, Brianna, Miss Penelope, and my grandmother all burst in. A triple dose of insanity could easily destroy the very weak, the we very weak grip I held on my pathetic, pathetic for reality. It was enough to make me want to jump out of my bedroom window, screaming, "Wake up! Wake up!" Brianna screamed. Me, Grandma, and Miss Penelope need you. To help us make some homemade ice cream. My grandma said to me in the bed and took on me. Time to get up, Miss Lazybones. Please, grandma, stop. I don't feel good and I'm exhausted. Well, no wonder. How can you get a good night's sleep with all this junk on your bed? Backpack, book, sneakers, and she picked up, picked up a crumbled piece of paper that had fallen out of my pocket. I started a litter. Is it? Is this any good? I can I throw it away? She said, opening it up and reading it. She slid down, slid, slid, slid her glasses down her nose a bit and squinted. Oh, that thing! It's nothing. Just toss it. I muttered, and Brianna. I shoved my head back under the pillow, hoping Grandma and Brianna would take the hint and get lost. Are you sure, honey? It looks like this looks like it might be from important. Hmm. WCD talent show case entry firm. So your name of your band is actually I'm not really sure yet. Now that's a bit odd, don't you think? Miss Penelope says she's looking for chocolate cupcakes. Any cupcakes in here, Nikki? Brianna said as she rummaged through my sock drawer. The uh, when I peeked out of my from under my pillow. No, Brianna, there are no cupcakes inside my sock drawer. And no, and Grandma, no, that's not the name of my band. Like, how totally stupid would that? I stopped mis mid sentence. Inside my head, my brain was screaming, OMG, OMG, that's it. I just found, had the most fantastic idea. Maybe it was still hope for a band after all. I was so happy I had hugged Grandma. I love you, Grandma, I giggled and as, as I jumped down, jumped up and down on the bed. She climbed up and joined me too. Join me. I love you too, sweetheart. I'm glad you're feeling better. Hey, what about me, Brianna squeaked. And Miss Penelope, we want to jump too. We all first of hell hands and jumping on the bed like it was a trampoline or something. I promised to help them make ice cream as soon as I made a few phone calls. So Brianna and I were so grandma and Brianna rushed downstairs singing Girls Wanna Have Fun at the top of their lungs really off key. I could hardly wait to call Chloe and Zoe. When I told them my idea for getting us back into the talent show, they thought it was brilliant. Next, we called Violet, Brandon, Theodore, and Marcus to make and made plans to meet with Sasha to update her about our new status. My final task was to make some major design adjustments to our band t-shirts. Later that evening, everything went as planned and and we concerned cornered Sasha backstage. I smoothed out her crumpled entry form as best I could and I handed back it to her. However, before Sasha could read him, Kenzu came running over. Nikki Maxwell, what are you doing here? Sasha already told you that Rorcalius is disqualified. Mackenzie, we're not into a talent show as Dorcalius, I said happily. Our entry form is correct. 
Mackenzie looked totally confused. What well, if you're not Dark Elliot, then who are you? She obviously didn't have a clue. Sasha read over her for entry firm and slowly nodded. Yeah, it makes sense. If that's the name of your band, I guess you guys are back in the show. What? How can they be back in the show, Nikki? You can't get away with this, Mackenzie screamed, stomping her foot like a toddler, having a temper tantrum or something. It's not fair. Later, Mackenzie has said, break a leg. Only I really meant it. Well, okay, I just, I meant it just a little. My word got quickly around that the back bank. We were back in, and the competition was going to be brutal. After the so, so, show started, sorry. After the show started, we sat, it, sat in the dressing room watching all the other acts on a television monitor. There were magic acts, dance groups, bands, singers, and musicians, and most of them were really good. Winning the tunnel show was not going to be easy going to be easy. After about a half an hour, the assistant stage manager finally took us backstage and told us to wait in the wings since we were going on next. Mackenzie's dance group was performing and I had to admit they were awesome. They wore sequenced jumpsuits and pretty much danced their butts off to a melody of the latest pop tunes. The crowd went wild. Since our band was added to the lineup at the last minute, we were the last act to perform. Wallet and the guys were entering from the stage left, and, and Chloe, Zoe, and I were entering from stage right. While we were waiting to go on, suddenly my stomach started doing some, started doing double somersaults. I must have been having a panic attack or something because my brain was screaming. Self like, what are you doing? You can't go out there and sing in front of all those people. What if you mess it up? Your life will be ruined. But I wanted that scholarship so badly I didn't have a choice. Chloe and Zoe must have sensed my fear because they each took my hand and squeezed it and told me I was going to do fine. My knees felt really wobbly. But it was great to know that if I actually gave out and fell over, Chloe and Zoe would be there to drag me across the stage and stick my microphone in my hand. They're like the best friends ever. Jean began to explain what felt to hear the crowd when the announcer introduced us. And our next band act is a band made up of Nikki, Chloe, Zoe, Brown, Wally, Theodore, and Marcus. Please welcome to stage. Actually, I'm not really sure yet. I actually... I really, really love her new name. It sounded edgy and professional, like those real bands on MTV. We quickly walked on stage and took our places. I nervously glanced out at the audience and squinted, tried to spot faces I knew. But because of the glare of the bright stage lights, the crowd was just a massive blur of darkness, noise, and excitement. What actually was a good thing. Because not seeing a million people staring at me made me feel a less nervous. Made me feel less nervous. I looked over my shoulder and Brandon gave me a huge smile and a thumbs up. Then he then did four taps with his drumsticks, launching Violet, Theodore, and Marcus into the intro of the song. Oh, gee, it sounded so good. I had to remind myself it was my four friends playing that music live and not a song blasting on my iPod. Chloe, Zoe, and I started started our dance routine just the way we had practiced it. Then I smiled at my BFS, took a deep breath, and sang the first note. At first, that felt a little so shocking to hear my own voice so loud and clear, but I tried to relax and enjoy my performance. By the time we got to the chorus, Dark Nerd Freak Geek, Geek Freak is all you see, Just, but just back off and let me be me. I could see the first two rows had got up on their feet and were dancing along. We finally finished our song, the crowd cheers like crazy, and we got the standing ovation. They actually loved it. Chloe and Zoe, Chloe, Zoe and I hugged one another as our musician team exchanged fist bumps and high fives. I was so hoping we were going to win. We had to win. 
All the acts quickly fell back on stage and lined up around us. As Mackenzie and her group crowded in right next to us, she sm- smiled sweetly at Brandon. You guys were awesome. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck to you, he said politely. Then Mackenzie turned and looked at me like I was something she scraped off the bottom of her shoe, which didn't surprise me one bit. As he joined Mr. Trevor Chase, took the stage and the tension was so thick you could cut it with a knife. As you all are aware, all the talent was here was very good. I encourage each of you can continue to hone your craft, but tonight the, there can only be one winner. And the winner, I held my breath and chanted inside my head. Please let it be us. Please let it be us. Please let it be us. Of the talent annual WCD Talent Showcase is Mac Maniacs, Mackenzie Shriek. Then she hugged Jessica, all her dancer cards around hugging one another. I was so disappointed, I felt like crying. It wasn't the longing for losing part that made me feel so bad, but the fact that I was going to have to leave WCD and my friends. I think the rest of them band was a bit surprised we lost, but we were being really good sports about it. After we left the stage, we all hugged one another too. And everyone told me I sang really well. Nikki, this was so fun. Well, gosh, we didn't even win. But hey, that's showbiz. All of us, seven of us shouted and then erupted into peals of laughter at our little joke. But deep inside, I felt really horrible knowing that I was going to have to say goodbye to everyone in a few days. My eyes started to tear up, but I didn't want to see my friends crying. To see me crying. Um, uh, my throat is a little dry. I'm gonna get, run to get the hall, get a drink. I'll be right back, okay? I announced and took off before anyone had a chance to join me. I went straight to the girls' bathroom, splashed water on my face. I quenched the thought of having to tell my parents the crazy stuff I'd done. Suddenly, the bathroom door opened and Mackenzie rudely brushed past me in a hurry. Excuse me. Excuse you, she hissed as she bibbed at her Erika. I have photo shit to do. I just rolled my eyes at her. Too bad you lost. I tried to warn you not to waste your time. At least Jessica and I will finally have get to have lockers e- next to each other when you transfer to a public school. Ever since your dad got hired the ex- as the exterminator, our school has been overrun with bug- bugs. Besides, you're way too poor to pay the tuition bill. You got in the mail last week, so you Kenzie got this really funny look on her face, and her, she bit her lip. Then she took her lip gloss and nervously slapped her on a thick layer. She, I wanted to tell her to keep her nose out of her purse and business, and she had no idea what she was talking about. Although to be honest, she knew exactly what she was talking about because there was no way we could feel the tuition bill. And suddenly it hit me. Mackenzie hit didn't know exactly what was she talking about. But how was that possible? How did she know about my bill? And why was she squirming and avoiding eye contact? I put my hands on my hips and stared right into her beady little eyes. So Mackenzie, how did you get to know I got a tuition bill? Or did your BFF Jessica also send you a copy of the a phony bill that she sent me? Well, she's just an office assistant assistant in her free periods. She would never, like, mail or stuff to people. Actually, Mackenzie stumbled as her cheeks flushed. I cannot believe my ears. For the past two weeks of uh, my life, for the past two day a week, my life had been pretty much a, a one gigantic, gigantic, continuous nightmare as I desperately tried to figure out how to pay the tuition roll. Then I practically had a meltdown dealing with the ma- mental anguish of a possible transfer to a new school, only to finally find out that it was another Mackenzie's cl- cruel prank. Pan- sorry, right then, so angry, I wanted to grab one of Mackenzie's four ninety five dollars to it if had a belly flat and shove it right down her throat. I took a step towards her. You and Jessica sent me a few. Phone Hushamu, I've been very sick about how my parents were gonna pay it. How could you do that? 
The Kenzie notices it bad in her eyelashes at her perfect reflection in the mirror and then slapped the cap back on her lip gloss. I don't have the slightest to- idea what you're talking about. Mackenzie, you're such a liar. And besides, if we did you send you a phone to your phone bill, you don't have any proof. Do you, loser? With that, she turned and sashayed away out of the bathroom. I just hate it when Mackenzie sashays. Although, to be honest, I was super relieved to find out the tuition will first from her and not the school. I felt like I was finally waking up for, from a two-week-long nightmare. Well, I've learned my lesson, that's for sure. No more secrets. I was going to tell Chloe and Zoe about my dad and my scholarship the first chance I got. And once the entire school knew about it, I would no longer have to lie awake nights wondering when Mackenzie was going to drop the bomb. It was very heavy. It was like a heavy wave was lifting off my shoulders, even as I thought about it. Just then, Chloe and Zoe rushed into the bathroom out of breath. Oh, there we are. We've been looking everywhere for you, Zoe panted. Mackenzie told us we were in here. OMG, you're not going to believe what just happened. Chloe's eyes were huge. After you left, Zoe continued, Trevor Chase came over and congratulated us. He said he wanted to let us know that 15 minutes of fame features unpolished amateurs going to a boot camp to get better. He said we sounded he said we sounded really professional and were actually too good to be his intro. Can you believe that? He said he won't start filming until the next season, until next fall. And that's when Mackenzie's group will get to audition, but he wants us to work with us right now. Nikki, he loved our song and wants to release it ASAP. What? Are you kidding? No way, Esper. Yep. He says he wants to meet with us, all of us and our parents after the holidays he'll be and that he'll be in touch. Blake continued. The three of us started screaming and did a group hug. I could not believe that People all over the world might actually be able to hear our song. What if we made any money? I could use my person to finally buy myself a new phone. Back in the auditorium, I was talking to my parents when Principal Munson came up and congratulated me. I was praying that he wouldn't mention that work extermination fiasco, but he did. Apparently, my parents had run into Principal Winston and his wife at the restaurant last Sunday. He, Dad... He and Dad chatted and then arranged a meeting for next Saturday to evaluate the WCD problem. Thank goodness my dad hadn't been fired after all. I so believe. I never thought in a million years I'd actually be happy he was a WCD exterminator. But more than anything, I was super grateful that Dad arranged my scholarship. I guess I didn't really appreciate it until I thought I lost it. Anyway, I already know that my... Only Bugs, Dad, and Principal Munster are going to find a WCD or in a jar in Mackenzie's locker. But I've learned my lesson the hard way, courtesy of Mackenzie. I'll never ever stick my nose in Dad's business again, and that's a promise. So I kept my big mouth shut about the WCD bugs. After we changed out of a band t shirts, Chloe, Zoe, and I, Violet, went back to the dressing room to pack up the rest of her stuff. Brandon and I sat in, the, sat in the second row of the auditorium, which was pretty much empty. He told me, we're renaming our band, actually, I'm not really sure yet, at the last moment was pure genius. First, I admitted the idea was that it was my grandma who had given me the idea. He also said he was proud of me, that I was such a good singer and I could be a star. I was like, yeah, right. A not so talented pop star. We were just sitting there facing each other, and he kind of stared at me for what seemed like forever. He blushed. I blushed, and my stomach got all fluttery. OMG, I just hate when he does that to me. Then I smiled. Then he smiled at me, this surf, surf, shy look on his face. I almost freaked when Brandon and Flynn for a little until we were like 10 centimeters apart. My heart was pounding so hard I could hear it in my ears. For seconds, 
because for a second I thought that maybe he was going to, you know, squee. That's when Rihanna suddenly popped up from the row behind us and leaned over our face and shoved her right fist right in Brian's face and shouted, What's up, dude? Miss me, Miss Penny Lope. She was smart from a pen and she says you have cooties. I could not believe Brianna actually did that. OMG, I was so embarrassed. But mostly I felt super giggly and insanely happy because everyone, everything had worked out. I grabbed Miss Pendulope and gave her a big, fat, fat, sloppy kiss. We totally grossed her up. Her being Brianna, not Miss Pendulope. And of course, Brianna and I totally laughed up, cracked up, cracked up. I guess he noticed me that I'm a weird like that. OMG, I'm such a jerk. And it's the end of the book. I'll see you guys um, with a new book really soon. Bye.